Welcome to God's View. So glad you joined us today. Uh, we have a really uh, wonderful program again with a very special guest that we're going to be telling you about in a minute. Please go to those prayer lines across the bottom of the screen. Call. Don't go through things alone. 307 637 pray. That's 7729. And when we say that the blind is seen and the uh, deaf has heard and lame has walked, it has happened. Yeah. It has yeah. happened on the prayer lines. God has been amazingly doing just signs, wonders, and miracles, and breakthroughs for people. And so, again, if you're hurting today, don't go through things alone. Call the prayer lines so we can pray with you. Mm -hmm. I answer those prayer lines a lot and spend a lot of time with people, and it is such a joy. It is such an honor and uh, just to agree and stand with you. And a lot of hurting people, girls, yeah. aren't there? A lot yeah. of things mm -hmm. on those prayer lines. But mm -hmm. so call them, okay? Don't be left out. Let's agree and see your breakthrough together, okay? And with all that said... I know some of you are clicking through the channel because we hear it all the time and you go, well, what's that? Stay <laughs> parked right there. You won't want to miss today's program. We got a great guest and we're going to be talking about that. But I'm Charlene back to Miriam, one of your God's View hosts. This is Jennifer Griffin, Lana Gardner, and thank you for joining us. Go get your favorite cup of coffee or tea or wherever you are and uh, join us around this table. And with all that, I know you see our uh, this lady right over here to my left, well, to right on the thing, but to left. And uh, this is our very special dear friend, Nina Garner. And Nina, you're out of Kentucky, no, Tennessee, Kentucky? Yeah. No. Where are you from? I'm actually from Mississippi, just outside Mississippi. of Memphis. Mississippi, you're from mm. somewhere, see? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, sweetie. We're so glad Welcome. you came back. Glad to be here. You know, uh, Nina uh, joined us before, very prophetic, awesome woman of God. She has uh, One Voice International Ministries. Yeah. She's president of that. She, uh, she's done a bunch of stuff, believe me, and <laughs> even from managing TBN, one of their studios. So you have yeah. a bunch of stuff, and they can go on your Facebook and, and learn more about you too, mm -hmm. or to your website across the bottom of the screen. Right. It'll be periodically uh, across there, so if you miss it, just keep on watching, and you'll get it again, and you can jot it down. So with all that, thanks for being with us. Oh, thank thanks. you for thanks, having thanks. me. I enjoy it. And so anyways, okay, tell us all the things. And we're going to yeah. talk about your book and all that. Yes. But tell us what, what's the Lord saying to you. And, and oh. tell us a little bit about yourself if you want and your ministry or whatever. Oh, that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. <laughs> we're just um, letting you roll. All right. I can yeah. roll. Um, <laughs> what the, what is the Lord saying? Roll. The Lord is saying to get his bride ready. Wow. to get his bride mm -hmm. ready. You know, we see a lot of the things that are going on in the world today, um, and every day there's another terrorist wow. attack mm -hmm. or another yes. attack of mm -hmm. some sort. Um, it, it's, it's all kind of divisions that are happening. But I think at this hour, though, it is a time for the church to rise and shine. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and God talked about that there being a darkness that was going to come and a gross darkness that was going to come upon the world. But in that process, the church is going to arise out yes. of obscurity. I love and it. one of the things that the Lord spoke to me last <laughs> night was, we hear about all the doors that are closing um, like the one over in Russia now is beginning to close and several of the countries that are beginning to close to Christianity. And what the Lord spoke to me last night was basically I have the final say. Mm -hmm. um, Amen. And, and he's, he's Amen. letting us know that he is sovereign. He's in control of what mm -hmm. is going on. Yes. And, and the interesting thing that he Amen. said to me was he said, I am the one that opens and closes the door. Yes. Amen. And he says, so, you know, don't let those things, don't, don't believe the report of the world mm -hmm. over re receiving the report of the Lord. Yes. So even if supposedly it is close to Christianity, God sends you, you still go because Amen. God's got you covered. Amen. And so God doesn't Amen. want us to walk in fear or the doubt that we can still do the things that God has called us to do, but he wants us to continue to walk in the things that we've been called to do because for many of us, God has had us on the sidelines. Mm. And I know for myself, there's a lot of things that God has put in me and he's held me, he's reserved me for many years, but he says, still yet, 
I'm fixing to call you to travel and I'm fixing to call you to actually do what you have been training to do for the last however long yes. years for mm -hmm. many years over 40 years mm -hmm. God has been training me to do what I'm called to do so there are other people that have ministries that have not been birthed out yet and you know, and, and speak to the ones that say, you know, they're, they're saying, oh, I'm too old, but what about that one guy? Does anybody know his name? He started ministry at like 89 years old and preached until Moses. he was like 100. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wanna, well, I you are so cute. cute. <laughs> it was a you, you said, yeah. <laughs> but no, somebody here on earth, and so it's never too late to start. And never. you know, um, I mean, I, I just been looking down at this, so I need to tell them about your book, okay. Worship That Touches the Heart of God by Dr. Nina Gardner. Um, Lana's last name's Gardner, but yeah. wildly too, because you're married now. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, I'm just gonna set this up sure. here the whole time and allow people to see it. But you know, uh, Nina, does this have anything to do with what you're talking about and the heart of God and... and Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. okay, let's hear about it. <laughs> yeah. This book is well, actually, I'm sorry. Oh, I, too, I really wanna know what are the hidden things? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you say it to me? She's so God's been holding you back. <laughs> what are the hidden things? This is actually one of them. Oh my! That nice. God had had nice. been giving to me parts of it down through the years. In fact, when I was a young girl, about twelve years old, when I got saved, mm -hmm. and the Lord began to lead me to the Ark of the Covenant and to study on the Ark and the contents of the Ark, and mm -hmm. He had me studying on David, and He had me studying on various pieces and parts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. back in the back around the early part of two thousand, the Lord began to give me. Um, uh, uh, he gave me another book called The Coming Order of Davidic Worship. And I didn't understand it at the time because when even as a prophet, you know, you, you, can, you can have things that God gives to you and prophetically you don't understand. Mm. And he, this is what he gave to me. And I said, Lord, I don't even know what that is. Definitely. You know, uh, but he I said, write know. the book. And yeah, I'm like, I, I don't know. know what that is, but I'll try to write the book, you know. So I did write it the best I knew how to write it. Yes. And it wasn't a really big book, but it was the, the basic foundations. And after I wrote that, God gave me 12 positions of, of Davidic worship. Wow. But, and he gave oh, nice. me the scriptures and, and, and a lot of the information about it. And then he put it on hold mm -hmm. because I had other assignments that mm -hmm. I had to go and do. Mm -hmm. And honestly, part of that assignment was my family. And God yeah. had me working with yeah. my family mm -hmm. for a period yeah. of years. But then God told me, he, he, kept, he started sending me prophets and he kept saying, I need you to write the book. I need you to write the book. So this book is actually about Davidic worship, how David set up worship, and it was 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are so many revelations that are in the book that honestly I can say the Lord wrote the book, mm -hmm. and he just allowed me to put my name oh, on sure it. Oh, sure, he had yeah. to. Yes. The, um, the interesting thing was I had written it, and after I wrote the book, it was more of a theological thing mm -hmm. that I was doing because I had been in college and had been teaching in college, had been running the college, okay, the International College of Ministry. But then God was like, no, I don't want this to be a theological book because people are not really mm. all that into doing the theology unless you're studying theology. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And he I'm said, I need you. you to put the cookies on the bottom shelf for the babies. Mm. He says, so that if they're a new convert, that they understand and know what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the day that, that this whole book shifted was one November, and I had uh, another prophetess that was there with me at the house, and we began to talk, and she said, Nana, I need something that is visual. You know, you can't just yes. give me the scriptures and expect me to understand and know how to practically apply it. Mm -hmm. I need to know if I'm going to go in and I'm going to worship God, what does that feel like? What is it that I'm supposed to be thinking about? Mm -hmm. What is it that I'm supposed to physically be doing? Mm -hmm. And so because of that, she began to talk to me about that. And I know that it was God using her mm -hmm. because at that point, yeah. all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord fell in my house. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I began to experience the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was just like all over again. Yeah. But the interesting thing mm -hmm. was the glory cloud moved in, and I saw yeah. it when it walked in under the threshold of the house. And as I'm sitting there, I began, I was totally enveloped with the presence of God, totally enveloped. Mm. And I, I just for a while, God was speaking to me and he kept saying, I want the people to know that they can touch my heart. Mm -hmm. He said, that's what I've always been after. Mm -hmm. He said, that's why I took their stony heart out of them mm -hmm. and put them a heart of flesh. He yes. said, I want them yeah. to know that I'm a God that's touchable. 
Yes. And he says, in the church world as we know it, they don't know how to touch me. Mm -hmm. They don't know what it feels like. They don't know what they're supposed to do. And most people even avoid even coming to the worship services because they don't feel like that they fit in. Mm -hmm. yes, he says, I want you to show oh. them oh, where they my. fit and how to get there. Well, it's funny how you're talking about touching the heart of God. I just want to give wet their lips. You have a, a, a chapter in here, Touching the Heart of God. Have you ever felt like you're going through the motions of life never truly feeling alive? Have you ever gone to church looking for something to fill your emptiness and left unfulfilled? Although you had no real complaints and everything on the outside seemed fine, yet inside you knew something was missing. All the answers you seek are in your worship, the worship that starts within you. That's good. Mm. This is That's good. good. This is her book, and uh, it's called Worship That Touches the Heart of God. You want to go, where can they get this book real quick? Um, they could go to my website okay. at, at www. Of one voice, O N E V O I C E I N T dot com, the screen. Yeah. and they can also get it online at Amazon dot com. Okay, and they can also buy it from the publishing company called Serta Publishing. Okay, wonderful, yeah, because this is. And it is an ebook form Sounds also. Sounds really good. Oh, it's ebook form too. That, oh, it people e love that now. Mm -hmm. That's a mm -hmm. that's a new thing. But finish what you were saying. But I just really want to get that in because you were talking. Uh, the Spanish people. My home church is a Spanish church. Ah. And they were crying for this, and they were already doing part of the Davidic worship, but they said, we want to know the rest of it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so not uh, this came out last May. Okay. And then, oh, it's very new. Very mm -hmm. new. And then this came out as of March the 1st of this year. Mm -hmm. And this is oh, wow. also available in ebook format. Okay, so they're different books. Yep. Yes, this, this is the is Spanish the version. Oh, version. this is the Spanish version. Oh. I'm like, oh, my goodness, thank you. Thank you, girls, because I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm thinking, what do you mean they're different books? But it's just in Spanish. Yes. Same writing. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So they can get it in Spanish. Wow. How great is that? I wish we knew how to speak Spanish. We could tell them. Mm. Do you know how to speak Spanish? I don't. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> I always have an interpreter for me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyways, finish. You. It was so intriguing what you were saying. But when you were talking about touching the heart of God, it was so funny. I had turned to that page, touching the heart of God. And so I thought, well, let's get that in there. Well, because that's just one of your chapters. I mean, my goodness, it's got minister, the priest office, the glory of the tabernacles, three dimensions of worship, flow of the Holy Spirit, uh, your open door, visualizing your tabernacle, releasing your burdens, glory of worship. I mean, it goes on and on. So great chapters. What Sounds happens like when we sing in worship? What happens? You actually ascend to the throne of God. Mm. Mm. When it's done, see, see in, in John 4 and 23, it says God is seeking for worshipers. Mm -hmm. And he said, but they have to worship in spirit and in truth. Yeah. And so David understood that principle because, you see, David said, who could approach the throne of God except that they had clean hands and a pure heart? Mm. And so David was all about worshiping God, even when he was in the fields, when he was a shepherd, mm -hmm. when he was unknown to anybody, and they really didn't care about him or mm -hmm. what happened to him. Uh, even yesterday, Lana was speaking at, at our camp meeting, and she was saying that if you were a shepherd, they really didn't care if anything happened to you. Mm -hmm. You know, and he wasn't even acknowledged as a king back then. Didn't even uh, his right. daddy didn't even acknowledge him. Yeah. Yes. In heaven, it did. They were the <laughs> lowliest, acknowledged the lowliest of the mm -hmm. low. Mm -hmm. yes. They wouldn't even be allowed to testify in court. Mm -hmm. And that if they fell into a pit, they, no one was obligated to pull the poor shepherd out of the pit. They'd lay how there and terrible. die. How That's terrible. how Jesus low they were. Considered and a Jesus <laughs> announces his best to yeah. his mm -hmm. words, to their yes. words. But I think that that speaks volumes to us, mm -hmm. though, mm -hmm. because we can be nobody. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's not that I came from a long lineage of ministers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that I came from, from people who were well-known. It's you can, you can be the Gideons. You, you can be, mm -hmm. you know, people who are, are virtually unknown that nobody would have ever selected you. But God knows who you are. And when you worship God in spirit and in truth, it doesn't matter who else uh, approves of it, you know, yeah. because we're worshiping to the audience of one. That's mm -hmm. right. And, and when I get God's attention, I don't care if it's anybody else's attention, Amen. you know, because right. he's, he's the one I'm after, and he's my pursuit, and he's always been my and pursuit. And the anointing mm -hmm. comes through that, that yes. intimacy for yes. God. I, I was going to ask you about the chapter. You said something about visualizing the tabernacle. Yes. Can you tell us about that? 
In visualizing your tabernacle, I, I actually go back into the Old Testament mm -hmm. and how that David talked about we enter through the gates with mm -hmm. thanksgiving and into the courts yes. with praise. Well, each one of those things are symbolic mm -hmm. there. And it talks about how that when he came, he was rejoicing when he came through the gates of praise. Mm -hmm. And when we're entering in into worship, mm -hmm. we should be happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, who else could approach a king without having to be properly adorned. Uh, and yes. I mean, you know, you do it in your shower or, or when you're cutting yeah, grass, you know, I mean, you don't, have, you don't have own priestly <laughs> garments yeah, when right. you're doing that, but yet we're allowed <laughs> to come in yeah. and, and we're mm -hmm. allowed to worship. Yeah. And so he was, he was saying, I was glad when they said unto me, let me go into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he had a joyful attitude and, and it, David was joyful about everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so David came in and he totally changed the way that worship was. And I want to give you this, this word that the Lord gave to us last year at a, at a, um, conference that we had, the Lord began to, to speak to the people and he said, the days of dutiful religion are past. Yay. Mm -hmm. He said, and yet <laughs> the people Lord. are coming to church in dutiful religion. Yeah. They're coming yeah. because yeah. they have to. They're, come, they're going through the motions, mm -hmm. but wow. there's not real worship mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And so we see that a whole lot, even in, yeah. in a lot of the congregations that we go to. Now, there'll be some that will actually worship, mm -hmm. but by really? and large, the people are not worshiping God yes. the way that God deserves exactly. to be worshiped yes. because he created everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord was saying, he says, I don't want that anymore. He said, in fact, when he, he says, I had to do it as a schoolmaster so that they would understand at least in form of what I wanted. He said, but that was just the outward adorning. He said, what I'm looking for is the worship from the heart. Yes. He says, and do you think I really wanted to be behind the veil? Do you think I really didn't want to be with my people? Yes. Mm -hmm. He says, I was mm -hmm. glad when the veil was torn and I could come out and be with my people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. You, you said Psalm 104 and you were quoting about entering his courts. It first says with thanksgiving, right? Th uh, then his courts with praise, mm -hmm. right? How important it is. To well, have you know, uh, heart. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Jen, you asked the question, visualizing mm -hmm. your tabernacle, mm -hmm. and your answer uh, was fabulous. And I mean, all that's in the book, probably correct. Yes. Oh. But I went to the chapter on page seventy-three. You want to get this book? I mean, everything she's saying is in this book. Uh, your oh. personal time of communing with the Lord will be more intimate and intense because this is the birthplace of your Zion. Mm. I mean, isn't that mm. awesome? And of course it goes on and on. I'd like to read a bunch of it to you, but God meets you personally there, she talks about. And, and is, it is here in your own personal tabernacle where you are free to minister to God and release your emotions. You know, and that's a big th big deal, releasing your emotions and getting the breakthrough in that moment in yes. your emotions. Yes. And I'm sure you go on to talk about that. I think it's really that. important to visualize it. I mean, like you're saying, Visual, because you yeah. actually, we can enter in and physically walk into or move into that place. And I think that's important because sometimes we think we can't move in, like you said, but we're removing right into the presence of God at that point, well, intentionally, right? Worship and praise is a cure mm -hmm. for depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. I don't care mm -hmm. how depressed you are. You might have to stand and worship for an hour, yeah. you know, yeah, but, but you, that's yes. a spirit, yes. so it goes. Mm -hmm. It's the cure. Mm -hmm. Well, you will find what well, everything of Davidic worship is, is actually three-dimensional. Okay. Everything is three-dimensional. How's that? Because the tabernacle, the real tabernacle is in your heart. Mm -hmm. And so you <laughs> enter in first. You, you learn how to enter in through your heart, all right? Mm -hmm. But then there's the, the physical. Mm -hmm. Where, where you actually come into the church doors and you, and you go through the, you come into service, okay? Mm -hmm. But then in song service, there, there is a progression. There needs to be a progression in song service. And in the book, I cover that area mm -hmm. that, that some songs will take you to the holy place. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them won't. Some, mm -hmm. some talk about wanting to go there, but they never get you there. Mm -hmm. True. You know, yeah. so, true. so there's various songs and, and, and a true worship leader will know how to lead them from the outer courts, from the gates, mm -hmm. all the way in yes. to have a true encounter with God. Yeah. Yes. We did this wow. um, in, a, in a Spanish church in Huntsville where I came in and the pastor wanted me to teach the people. And of course, something that I'm so passionate about, it's hard for me to teach. Mm -hmm. I can try to teach it, but ultimately I end up preaching it. 
okay? <laughs> um, like I did yesterday. But it was fabulous yesterday. <laughs> but, but I, you know, one of the things that I began to do is I began to <clears throat> tell the people what God wanted. Mm -hmm. Because God is so hungry for our worship, and and we're going to worship forever. Yes. Prophecy is going to cease. Knowledge uh -huh. is going to pass away, but worship is going to always yeah. be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand mm -hmm. that Jesus is coming back for His bride, mm. and she is going to cry out to Him. She's going to begin to cry, and she's already crying. Some you hear it in pockets, if you will, but now God is beginning to say, "I need more." Mm -hmm. it, it's got to spread. It's got to spread because what's going to happen is the the prophecies that are coming to pass. You mm -hmm. know, people are looking at the prophecies and they're saying, "Oh, well, it's time. It's time. All of this is coming to pass. And why isn't the Lord coming back?" Mm -hmm. Right? Because they're looking at the prophecies. Well, the prophecies were the only only the signs mm -hmm. of His return, mm -hmm. but it's not the reason for His return. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah. The reason for his return is mm -hmm. for his bride. For his bride. Oh. Amen. And his bride has not yet made herself ready. Mm -hmm. And when a bride is ready, she begins to cry out to her espoused. Mm -hmm. And she begins to call him and she says, baby, I love you and I'm tired of being away from you, you know. Yes. So she is really beginning to cry out and it is her that he's coming after. Mm. Love so, mm -hmm. so he's saying, I need to get my bride ready. And so the Lord is saying, do this and do this now because it's got to go into the hands of the people. And it's not because I wrote the book. I'm not trying to sell a book. What I'm trying to do is prepare the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I don't have enough time yeah. to sit and teach everybody. So there it is. Yeah, yeah. and they can yeah. get it That's in this good. book. Everything mm -hmm. that Nina is saying, Dr. Nina, you can get right in this book. This is, this is really powerful, mm -hmm. what all is going on here. And it's just so simple because it is about praising. And you know, I was... Uh, saying earlier, praying or something last night, I had just a um, great encounter with the Lord, which, you know, we all have many of them, but I mean, this was like no other. And even though I've had some supernatural encounters with the Lord, but it reminds me of what you're saying right now with this worship and how it is. And, and uh, I, as I sat there and just wept and thanking the Lord and for the programs today and everybody, I mean, I just, I went into this dimension. I went into this realm with God and literally, and I don't even know how I can articulate this, but the thing that I kept saying, God, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And I just would weep before the Lord. I'm so grateful. Pretty soon, literally, yeah. the grateful word just came beating, just beating right off my heart and going like ripples of water right up to, you know, the throne. It was just, I mean, you can't articulate. I mean, it just really just came right out of there. Yeah. And I was just, it yeah. was just such a beautiful time with the Lord. And I know that's where you're trying to take people in and, and this encounter always you know and i know i'd love to stay there all the time but i i mean we've got but, but here's the do. beauty of it you might not can stay actually physically in your prayer closet yeah but this goes with you with you yeah. amen amen it's always it's with always us. there yeah. because you always have the tabernacle with you yeah. yes yeah. ancient yes. israel sent worshipers into the battle and they stayed in the front line well, what did they accomplish because David never went to battle unless he consulted with God. And mm. when God says, I am going to go with you, somebody needed to dance. Somebody yeah. needed to praise God. Somebody needed to declare and proclaim that the God, the Lord of the host, was coming. Mm. And that's why they feared David. The Bible says that they feared ah, David and they yes. feared the God that he served because he could not lose a battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And we won't lose a battle mm. if we will let the worship go forth. If we will yes. let that, now I'm not saying we're not going to go through some stuff, right? But we won't yeah. lose. Yes, that's right. right. That's right. right. And is. if you lose something like David did with Ziklag, you get it back. You get yeah. it back. All the yeah, <laughs> and many yeah. times I ten to a thousand get it all back. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's for sure. But you know, one of the interesting things about this is that this can be done at home, in your prayer closet. Yeah. Yes. And you will have a totally different experience than when you go to church. And if it's imp implemented at a church, it, it, it takes on a different flavor, yeah. a different setting. And yes. you're going to, we, when we did that at Huntsville, we saw people stopped and began to make reconciliation with one another, mm. yes. began to repent to one another. Wow. That we saw yeah. healings. We, we had, people were saved. People were filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
um, people were, were having visitations from Jesus himself. I find mm -hmm. moments, me in these moments all the time, I go to the post office, I can't go in the post office, I can't, I'm, I'm there in worship with God. You know, it's just everywhere, the tabernacle goes with it. you are, you know, you and are. so yes. we are, and, and I mean, I just have worship times all the time, it doesn't matter where. Well, and it changes everything, ch changes your heart, and that's what you're saying, when there's reconciliation that comes out of it, there's, mm -hmm. you know, our worship, everything comes out of that, there's the fullness of what he has. So. It's awesome. It's awesome. This issue. is a great book. Mm -hmm. They have to go get, you got to go get this book. I'm serious. And you can get it at her website across the bottom of the screen. And uh, man, everything she's been talking about is in this book. And you can go to Amazon.com also and get it. Or you can also get the, the uh, Spanish one from the publisher too. Yes. Everything from mm -hmm. the publisher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh my gosh. With that, I got to go. Oh, I oh. can't believe it. I want to keep going. I want to yes. hear more. I, I, oh I want to read the book. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Oh, God bless yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you don't know him, he's coming. And, Amen. and listen, he died for you. He loves you. He and, you. And many of you, you sit there and say, there's something in you. I've seen something, and, and, and I want that. Well, it's Jesus. We are Absolutely. nobody, but it's Jesus in us, the hope of glory. Amen. He died on a cross for you. He loves you. He wants you to come to him just the way you are. We hear it over and over that, oh, I can't. I mean, I'm just this horrible sinner. The, the walls yeah. would fall yeah. in and all this kind of stuff. No, it won't. No. He died yet while we were right. still sinners for us. And he wants you to come just as you are. You and him deal with your life. Mm -hmm. He wants you to just come. And all you got to do is say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I really do believe what they're saying. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe with my heart, I confess with my mouth that you died on a cross, that you are Christ, the Son of the living God, and you are coming back. And when you come back, I want to go. I want to be in heaven eternally. You do not want to go to hell. Mm. There's two places, and people say, oh, I believe in hell, but I don't believe in heaven. Well, how can you believe in hell and not heaven? I mean, really, the Bible's the one that talks yeah. about the devil. The Bible's the one who talks about hell. That's how you, that's how, you know, uh, he was exposed. Mm -hmm. And there, there is a hell and there is a heaven. And we want to see you in heaven. We want to come up and say, hey, I was watching you on God's view and I received the Lord. And oh, that's all we're about here at this program. Listen, if you did that, call the prayer lines at the bottom of the screen. Please go get this worship that touches the heart of God. You'll not be sorry, it's in Spanish also. Uh, website at the bottom of the screen. Most go to our website. Order this anointing oil today. God's Veal anointing oil helps us keep coming into your home and going around the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. My, He loves you, and we love you. But boy, Jesus loves you more, and He died for you. So receive Him today, and we'll see you next program. God willing. Mwah. God bless you. Go to www dot godsviewtvshows.com to view all God's View TV show hosts, books, and CDs, Joshua and Jennifer Griffin's music CDs, Mary Ann Peluso's music CDs, Lana Gardner books, and Charlene Back to Marion's books. Visit www.godsviewtvshows.com to purchase your products today. Go to www dot godsviewtvshows.com to view all God's View TV show hosts, books, and CDs, Joshua and Jennifer Griffin's music CDs, Mary Ann Peluso's music CDs, Lana Gardner books, and Charlene Back to Marion's books. Visit www.